Anchoring and stock mispricing. Anchoring is another common behavioral problem that can cause stock mispricing. A type of cognitive bias, it causes investors to attach a disproportionate amount of importance to one factor or set of attributes. Those attributes then serve as a reference point or anchor that influences the investor's future decision-making. For example, an investor may cling to a losing stock with the expectation it will at least break even. Anchoring is such a powerful bias that people continue to place undue importance on an anchor despite full knowledge of its illogicality. In their 2016 study, Keith Anderson and Tomas Zastoniak hypothesized that investors may anchor to the price-to-earnings ratio when investing in a stock. They think the stock with a high price-to-earnings ratio, say 20, must be good because thousands of investors are already paying $20 for each $1 of its current earnings. After investing in that stock, they fail to adjust their expectations when the stock's returns converge to the average returns over time. In other words, they expect the high price-to-earnings ratio to last, despite the evidence suggesting otherwise. To test their hypothesis, Anderson and Zastoniak rank stocks by price-to-earnings ratio from 1983 through 2010 and place them into 15 bins. Five of the bins contained extreme loser stocks. A third of the stocks in their sample had negative earnings in a given year. They then tracked the movement of stocks from one bin to another each year and studied the equal weighted returns of all these transitions. The study demonstrated that 1. Value stocks outperformed glamour stocks by an annual average of 7.5% when the two extremes of stocks with positive returns were examined. 2. The standard deviation of value stocks was only slightly higher than that of glamour stocks and could not explain their high returns. 3. Glamour stocks delivered poorer returns than value stocks regardless of the time horizon. 4. Value investors can expect higher returns over a horizon of 2 to 3 years. The returns on value stocks were only 5% for the first year, increasing to 21% in the second year, and declining to 15% for the third year, after which they reduced to a level slightly above that of glamour stocks. 5. There was only a 25% chance a value company would deliver negative returns in the next year, compared with 34% for glamour companies. 6. Most of the value companies 32% and extreme loss makers, 34%, are likely to stay in their bin, retain their price to earnings ratio, whereas companies in the middle bins were much more likely to move, with only 15 20% probability of staying in the same bin. 7. An extreme loss maker has only a 1 in 6 chance of returning a profit in the next year and a 27% chance of getting delisted. 8. When compared with value stocks that remain in the same bin, growth stocks that remain in the same bin deliver three times the rate of return, 12% and 36%, respectively. While this appears to rationalize the higher expectations of glamour stocks, the study found glamour stocks have a 5 in 6 chance of moving to another bin in the next year and delivering very poor returns thereafter. 9. Glamour stocks lose more value when they start making losses, as much as 41%, according to the study. Value stocks, on the other hand, have a greater chance of staying close to or in the value price-to-earnings ratio range. 10. Speaking of size, which we will discuss in the next chapter, smaller companies have a significantly greater chance of moving from growth bins to value bins. Simply put, Stocks of small companies that exhibit rapid initial growth have more chance of crashing and ending up close to their correct valuation. 11. Stocks with extreme losses deliver decent average returns, but very poor median returns. The standard deviation of their returns is double that of stocks in the glamour or value bin. 12. There is a 60% chance each year that an extreme loser firm will remain an extreme loser or will cease to be quoted. All these findings support the hypothesis that glamour investors anchor on the high price-to-earnings ratio of growth stocks 
and ignore the significant chance of the price-to-earnings ratio value changing in the future.